Welcome back. I've had a lot of questions about the Wim Hof method. So I want to tell you what I think about it and I want to explain why I think that. And I want to talk about some fundamental things that we've got to know about the breath if we're going to train it. So let's get into it. first thing that we can say is that there are fundamentally three categories of breath work. And so uh, there's a fourth phase of breath, which is what I train on meditative mellows, right? But that's not a work in itself. It is a consequence. And so first we have to divide everything into action and consequence. And this is very similar to the work that the Kriya Yogi does inside the spine. From Lahiri Baba, from Panchanan Bhattacharya, Dubeji, Maheshwari Dubeji, was famous in India for saying, you only do work in the spine in Kriya Yogi. You don't do it in the brain because of the repercussions that may take place from making war on the brain. He didn't say making on the war of the brain, but that's how I talk about it. The Kriya Yogi does action in the spine and that has a consequence of grace. And so you have this fundamental framework of action and consequence, right? So that's the first framework that we have to know, action and consequence. So I use heart rate variability breathing and I use breath holds in a very specific fashion and that will eventually take me into as a consequence the tranquil breath that's that's the initial framework we have to understand three categories to essentially understand all breath work we can fit it all into within three categories heart rate variability resonant breathing a cleansing breath, which will clean the blood a little bit, and breath holds. All right, so that's one, two, three categories. So now we can begin to see some fundamental differences be between the way I teach and the way that Wim Hof teaches, the way that Lahiri Baba teaches his students, and the way that Wim Hof teaches his students. There's fundamental differences. So when I teach, I am teaching fundamentally the resonance that takes place between the heart and the breath when you slow it down and when you maximize your exhale. That will lead into a resonance between the breath and the heart. And then you can stay in that resonance for a long period of time and get some really fa fantastic benefits right away. And I love this because the success rate for people is so high. When you teach them resonant breathing, they do it right away. It's very simple. Within five or 10 minutes, they start getting the four proofs. And so immediately you have benefit. And the fail rate, the people who are not able to do it is extremely small. So in terms of everybody who's trying it out, I would say 98% of those people have success. It might be a little success, it might be a, a medium success, it might be a ton of success, but everybody is getting success. In fact, uh, the, the fail rate might be even smaller than that. It's almost impossible to fail at heart rate variability resonant breathing. It's, it's designed not to fail. So the success rate is outrageously high, just crazy high. Of all the systems that I've ever seen on meditation, I've never seen so much success and, and not just the, the ability to make, okay, I, I did it and it, it worked, but the depth of that success is insane. People keep doing the heart rate variability breathing and they get very deep. They have interiorization. So in that way, again, the success is just phenomenal. 
Now what is Wim Hof doing? Which category does his first breath fall into? And I'll have a link below to one of his videos. You can see what kind of breath that he's doing. So he's doing This obviously is a cleansing breath. That would fit into the cleansing breath category. And there's nothing wrong with a little bit of cleansing breath, but he's using it as his primary breath almost exclusively. And then he does breath holds, right? So he's using those last two categories. He's using the cleansing breath and he's using breath holds. Okay, so that's good. Now we have that established. So what am I doing? I'm doing heart rate variability resonance. You can throw in a little bit of cleansing breath there if you like, but the big thing is the heart rate variability resonant breathing and then a little bit of breath holds at the end to increase your CO2 tolerance. And this, this is what I talk about on the fourth phase of breath training, right? So those are fundamentally different. And what you find with a cleansing breath alone and some breath holds, it, for some people, it will be very good. But your fail rate will be much higher. Somebody is, who is a little bit sick or who is a little bit older or somebody who doesn't get the mix quite right, what will happen is that they will get into hypoxia they will get into hyperventilation and hypoxia, and it will completely wipe them out. And so some days they'll do it and they'll feel great. And then some days they'll do it and they'll feel just absolutely horrible. And it will take them a few days to recover. It's very unfortunate, but that, that success rate is much, much lower with the Wim Hof method. And there's nothing in it to establish resonance between the breath and the heart. So it's missing this entire category, which is so profound and so deep and gives so much success. It is the base of the pyramid of breath. Whenever you go into the old scriptures, when you go into the Shastras, when you go into the Vedas, when you go into those and you hear them talk about pranayama, they are essentially talking about heart rate variability resonant breathing. They didn't have the terminology that we are blessed with today, but that's what they're talking about. It's a very old idea. It's a very old secret, and they were trying to tell it to us. And now we have the language to actually explain what is taking place inside of the body. The breath comes in and the heart rate goes up a little bit. The breath goes out as we maximize that out breath. We stimulate the dorsal vagal complex. And now we stimulate that parasympathetic and the heart rate goes down. And so now the breath and the heart are working together and we have resonance between the two of them. They're flowing at the same time, which is not something that happens every day when we're running around and we're in a slight stress state, right? It's incredible and we want that so bad it, 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 we need it so so bad it is the base of the pyramid and so when i look at wim hof i say okay that's that's good you're increasing your co2 tolerance that's very good and you're using a cleansing breath also very good for your blood but you are missing this essential category of the breath and which is basically all pranayama. So you've taken a cleansing breath and you're doing a breath hold. Okay, good. There's part of the Wim Hof method that some people might overlook and that's the cold. And I, I wanna explain why if you, so some of my students are like, I really like the Wim Hof. I wanna do it every once in a while. Great, do it, that's great. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna dissuade you from that. If you're going to do it, then you almost have to do the cold. And so let me explain why. Here we have a picture of a blood vessel. We've got the blood flowing through the artery, right? We can see that the blood is blue. It's not oxygenated. So what are we doing when we hyperventilate? 
if we do double breathing or we just simply do the Wim Hof breath, the first one, and we hyperventilate. <laughs> What have I just done? I have oxygenated my blood. So now that blood is going to be beautifully red, 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 right? Full of oxygen. Great. But now the oxygen is only staying in the blood. Why is it only staying in the blood? Because for there to be exchange between the blood and the body, the rest of the body, which is the muscles and the organs, for that exchange of oxygen to take place. It doesn't happen automatically. There has to be an exchange. There has to be a marketplace of exchange. And so what does that look like? The blood shows up to the muscle and it says, hey, I've got all this oxygen. And the muscle says, but I don't have any carbon. Because we sit in our offices or we sit in our home or we sit in front of the TV and we're not up and running. And so there's no carbon in the muscles. Not enough, at least. Right? And so a tiny little bit of exchange might take place, but not the real exchange that we want to, to really light up the body with oxygen, really oxygenate the body. So hyperventilation will not lead to the oxygenation of the body. It's a really important point. And so how does the yogi, using classic pranayama, how does he facilitate that oxygen-carbon exchange? Well, he does it in a very sneaky kind of way. He elongates his breath and introduces carbon into the oxygen-carbon mix. So he's creating more carbon in his breath and oxygen. And so now that carbon and oxygen flows through the blood vessel, through the arteries, and it meets up with the muscle. And the muscle says, hey, I don't have carbon. I haven't been running around. The blood says, hey, that's okay. I've got increased carbon content. And it says, oh, the muscle says, great, give me your carbon. And so the muscle takes the carbon. And now the muscle has some carbon some CO2. And so muscle turns around and says, hey, blood, I have CO2 now. And the blood says, well, I've got oxygen content as well. Well, let's, let's do the exchange. This is what we came here for. And they exchange CO2 and oxygen. And now the muscle and the organs have become oxygenated. And that's what you feel when you do a lot of heart rate variability breathing is you feel that oxygenation of your body. And that's one of the things that can lead us into that state of feeling the entire body tingle. It's that carbon oxygen exchange which has taken place and oxygenate the body on a deep level. We, by doing that, when the body becomes oxygenated, it automatically needs less. And so the heart rate and the breath rate will automatically go down. So now we're really fa facilitating a very deep yogic state and getting very close to the tranquil breath, which is what Lahiri Mashai asked us to get into the tranquil breath. He didn't say, go get into breathlessness. He said, get into the tranquil breath because that will lead into a deeper and deeper tranquil breath, which will become a breath that, well, where'd my breath go? It, it's gone. That is the deepest tranquil breath. So we have a continuum of tranquil breath, right? When we hyperventilate, we don't have that ability. The blood will stay red. It will not oxygenate the muscles. Sometimes, with some Wim Hof practitioners, they swear up and down, they are oxygenating the body. So how did that happen? Well, a couple ways it can happen. One, you can go out and run and carbonize your body. By running, you automatically carbon. So runners high, they go for a certain amount of time and then suddenly they get this euphoria. Why is that happening? They are carbonating the body 
they are increasing CO2 content in the muscles because of all the work the muscles are doing. And then now they facilitated carbon oxygen exchange and they get a runner's high, the runner's euphoria. That is carbon oxygen exchange, the way that our body was set up to actually work correctly. So a Wim Hof practitioner could go run, increase CO2 content into his lungs, and then do the Wim Hof method and have some success with that. But like I said, the ratio of success is always going to be lower because it is missing a fundamental breath, which is the heart rate variability resonant breathing. All right. The other way that the Wim Hof practitioner can increase CO2 content within his muscles is to go into the cold. So a really, really cold shower or go out in your lake and dunk yourself. What happens? You start to shiver. You start to shiver madly. And what are you doing? You are increasing the CO2 in your muscles. And now when you hyperventilate, you will create CO2 and oxygen exchange. When the blood shows up and there's carbon to exchange, you have a carbon oxygen exchange. The blood will take the CO2 and the muscles and the organs eventually will take the oxygen. And now you've oxygenated the body. So if you're going to do the Wim Hof method, you've got to throw in some running or some calisthenics or some cold to make you shiver so that you have CO2 in your muscles. You have carbon in your built up in your muscles because of all the work that they're doing, either shivering or running. <laughs> but you have to put that in the mix. And so that is going to increase your success rate if you're going to do the Wim Hof method. And there's nothing wrong with it. I love cleansing breath. I just think that it is very much overemphasized within that system. And it's very one sided, as you can see plainly. And what you really need, if you really want to have success as a yogi, you have to develop this resonance between the breath and the heart. You need the heart rate variability resonant breathing. So throw that in the mix for the love of Shiva. <laughs> throw that in the mix. You've got to have that. You've got to have that resonance between the breath and the heart. It, it's, like I said, the success rate is phenomenal. It's insane. It's such a great trick that the yogi is doing. He's increasing the length of his breath. Therefore, he is increasing the CO2 in the mix of his breath. That CO2 is exchanging into the muscle. Then the muscle exchanges it back with the blood and automatically you have carbon oxygen exchange glorious and then you feel your body tingling you feel your your body alive it might feel electric there's a little more than just carbon oxygen exchange going on there you're also experiencing sensations of the dorsal vagal complex becoming awake so there's more than that going on however that co2 and o2 exchange is essential not only that but the heart rate variability resonant breathing is much more calm. And so it will automatically lead to a calmer state and you'll have more ability to get into the freeze response much more quickly. And again, so the success rate is much higher and that's why I teach it. So I hope you loved this explanation. I hope it was very helpful. If it was, be sure to hit that bell down below so I can see all of you 